it was going on YouTube. So I wanted to give you guys an update on what's been going on. So basically, I'm still waiting on a couple of parts to come in for my 360 controller so that I can continue doing the scuff video. At the moment, I'm just waiting on the tactile switches and hopefully also some Lexan strips. But in the meantime, I wanted to kind of bring out some awareness about controllers in general. And so this controller right here is uh, it's a Logitech cordless precision controller. It uh, came out back in around, I want to say like 2004, for the original Xbox. It's one of the best wireless controllers I've actually used for the original Xbox. Um, they're pretty sturdy, really comfortable. They kind of remind me of the 360 controllers uh, in terms of the ergonomics. Uh, really nice, really nice range. And you can also turn off the vibration basically just by uh, pushing a button. So really nice. Really good feel to the joysticks as well. I'm not usually a fan of the dome joysticks, um, but this one, you know, just makes it work. But the problem with controllers like this one, uh, basically it tends to have problems with the joysticks themselves. Over time they start to drift. And so basically if you're playing like a third person shooter, first person shooter, you start to have problems where it would just start to move on its own. And this has been afflicting quite a few wireless controllers and even the wired ones uh, this generation. Specifically, uh, third-party controllers, the uh, default Microsoft controller doesn't seem to have this problem at all. But this guy right here, and I believe the Razer Onza Tournament Edition, which I got to try, a friend of mine had one, uh, started to have the same problem. And there's a lot of fixes that people do on these. Uh, people have tried different rubber band tricks and things like that. But ultimately what I found is a lot of times uh, people just end up replacing the whole joystick mechanism that's in the controller. And that's, uh, I mean, it runs pretty costly if you start to get to do a lot of those, if you've got a lot of controllers that are dying on you. But what i found to be actually a bit more, I guess, cheap is if you've got some compressed air lying around in your house, just a simple compressed air can, if you can open these up, uh, typically you can just blast some air um, right into the mechanism inside of this thing, uh, get ris gets rid of all the dust that's pretty much in there that could be in there, uh, any of the grime. And then what you can do is you can take one of these uh, machine oil uh, things. I don't know what you'd uh, what you'd get it from because this actually came with my shaver. I never oiled the damn thing. That's probably why it broke on me. But I just put like maybe a drop or two into the mechanism itself, and I just sort of moved the joystick around, and I let it. Uh, I put the controller back together, and I just let it sit for about a day, and it was working just fine. The next day, uh, no more drift on the sticks. It just pretty much fixed uh, any of those problems. And I ended up doing the same thing to my friend's uh, Razer Onza, and that actually fixed his uh, sticks as well. So the problem was basically that uh, the parts, they, they get worn down over time, and they start to have metal fatigue, but the oil actually helps uh, lubricate them, so they move around a little bit easier, and that, uh, that ultimately helps the controller perform at its optimum. Now, um, the other thing about these controllers is that sometimes, and this will happen over time, the manufacturers will actually put out like a little disclaimer that tells you what to do if uh, if you have these problems so for this controller in particular I'm gonna put a link in the description that's gonna tell you guys how uh, how you can actually re-zero the sticks there's a certain uh, button combination that you press on this thing and it helps you to basically get the sticks uh, zeroed in pro uh, properly after you've had the controller for a number of years um, it might actually you know I'm not even sure if it's a button combo on this one or something else but I know on the Onza you can actually change your you can change your sensitivity settings by doing a button combo and it's uh, it's pretty useful for those people that want to just see if maybe their sensitivity settings are a little bit off so that might be your uh, your problem so you don't have to open the controller up because the Onzas are a bit uh, a bit of a problem to take apart uh, you know there's a lot more parts uh, it's a lot trickier than the 360 controllers that are OEM you know the stock Microsoft controllers but as it stands that's, uh, that's basically all the information I wanted to give you guys so you get a little bit uh, more knowledge about how you can fix a possibly dying controller. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of information on this out there on the web. Uh, not too many people mentioning this. I believe I actually found this fix uh, in one of the comments that I was uh, looking at while helping my friend fix his Onza. But uh, that's the idea. So you want to get some machine oil. Again, just uh, any oil will work. Preferably something that works for any sort of uh, gearing systems. So something for your bike. Just so long as it's fairly liquid. You don't want to get like um, a lithium grease or anything like that. Uh, you don't want grease around your controller in general. But uh, pretty much any oil that's uh, meant for machines will work just fine and it should get you up and running. 
So hopefully that helps uh, those of you out that have been having controller problems. And uh, I'll see you guys in my next video whenever I get around to doing the scuff controller.